am Stephanie Rice. My team and I were traveling around looking for the untold stories of the paranormal, and our adventure starts here in Nevada, Missouri. So the James Brothers and Quantrell's Raiders and all those guys, Bloody Bill Anderson, they didn't become crooks until after the war. They were just local farm boys from the area that was Kearney, Missouri, up north and down in this area. And after the war, uh, Jesse tried to surrender and then the Yankee forces shot him. So he couldn't get a job and he couldn't surrender, so he turned to a life. This part of the country was fighting a civil war before the civil war started because Missouri was a slave-holding state. And they were trying to bring Kansas in as a free state. And so the battle across the borders began probably five years before the Civil War ever started. It and literally was, wasn't safe to be in this part of the it country. It wasn't. There was a man named John Brown who raided Harpers Ferry, but he lived in Kansas. And that man was, he carried a Bible in one hand and a gun in the other. It was just evil, he really was. But they raided over in here and killed people and took their slaves and their livestock and killed the men. And he well, they was just a group of riders would ride up to your house in the dark. A lot of them masked. And if they thought that you were a bushwhacker or you might have helped a bushwhacker or the Confederate Army, they just dragged the men out and either shoot them right over. But it didn't matter which side you was on because the bushwhackers they done some shooting themselves, so. The yeah. bushwhackers would raid across into Kansas. And so the, the border war started here. I mean, the border war was going on here five years before the Civil War started. It was right here that the last execution took place in 1896. A scaffold was built right against the side of the building here. A high board fence was put up, and people had to pay admission to see the execution. Uh, executions were done in public uh, up until the late uh, 19th century, and uh, they were done in the county where the crime took place. There were four individual cells in the rear section. Uh, each would have originally had four bunk beds apiece, so you could have fit 20-some men uh, into uh, individual cells here. Now, this is far better than the prison we saw in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, what they say, some of that, they'd rather serve two years in a penitentiary than here in one year in the basement. That's right. There are apparently cases documented that uh, men beg the judge to sentence them to longer prison terms so they could be sent to the state pen rather than serve a year or less than two years here. Well, the state pen we saw in up Wyoming, you would want to stay there. No. <laughs> I'm betting these ones were pretty dark in their time. Yeah, they would have been pretty dark because, yeah, they even yeah. when they call this, this lighting, but originally there would have been no light. Right. That's the only one came in through the outer window. It wasn't that much. Yeah. They had no windows. Yeah. cold. When we were in the castle overseas, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in the King's Chamber, mm -hmm. they had uh, three stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's where you come back. Uh, true dungeon. Yeah, it's yeah, you want to go upstairs. Uh, uh, you want to go upstairs. Uh, 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 prisoners were served in these little metal uh, divided trays here on the table. The sheriff's wife, or if they had to hire a cook, uh, that did the cooking and served them. We're not sure. We know from some of the days, obviously, it's not after 1960. This uh, countdown left open uh, at various times. So okay. this yeah, yeah, like a countdown of how many months or years uh, left. It's hard to tell what it is pre-1960, what it was after 1960 sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's a little bit loud. I'm standing on the spot and Nevada, Missouri, where the last execution was held, a man named William Wright was hung here for the murder of his wife with an axe in 1896. They say that he used to chew tobacco and he would spit tobacco into a can, and there have been accounts of them, people still hearing the tobacco hitting the can. We haven't got any evidence of that yet, but inside the jail, I was hearing voices of haze and help me get out of here and 
various things that they were saying to Derek and I. Uh, there was a woman back around in the 1890s. Her husband uh, was killed, and they were very, they were in their 20s still, and only been married, I think, just for a short time. And she was, you know, totally devastated by her husband's death. And she decided that she was going to have a tomb built for him, not just bury him, but to have a sarcophagus made. So they ordered this huge block of limestone from Carthage and a stone cutter. It was hauled up here on a train car, and a stone cutter spent days, maybe weeks, uh, carving and hollowing it out. And then they made a lid for it. And Mr. Dorsa was buried in this sarcophagus, like a, basically like an Egyptian pharaoh. Wow. But that wasn't enough for her. She wished to continue to see him, so she had a hole carved above his head in the lid of the tomb, and uh, a Bible, a Bible was, uh, well, a stone carved Bible was placed over it to cover it, but she had a key that could unlock it and she could move it aside whenever she wanted to and commune with him. <laughs> oh my lord. And she did this for apparently for some time. Uh, as he and they say she went insane eventually. Oh, yes. I just heard a woman say rape. I just heard a female voice say rape. All right, um, Garrett family, my name is Derek Zala. This is Stephanie Rice, and we're wondering if we could have your permission for this interview to be used in the filming of a pilot and documentary of small towns that have very interesting paranormal um, ghost stories or just very rich history. Do I have your permission? Yes. Thank you very much. I'm Cheryl and Garrett. I'm Madeline Garrett, I'm 13. I'm Danielle Garrett, I'm 9. I'm Marvin Garrett. I'm Tori Garrett, I'm 17. What's the creepiest thing you've experienced? I wouldn't say creepy. But I'm unusual. A fairly religious person. Mm -hmm. And so are we. Um, so um, there's a, a lady that will sometimes read my Bible with me. Um, especially, um, we kind of have a little alcove um, that we have a couch in, and that's where I spend a lot of my reading time. And um, I can feel her presence there when I'm reading. And um, when I pray, I always give her time to pray also. Aww. And so there's, and I know it's a female presence. Um, so there had to have been some lady that was a very religious person back how, however many years ago. Uh, and so that's really, it's a special moment for me. To be here and experience that every day. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. You have, you have a friend that. Yeah, and she has that dark I hair. With. Dark hair that's pulled up. Yes, high yes. neck dress. Yes, she does. Um, I just, okay. So the thing about that that cemetery that makes it so so special is that they still dig up Native American bodies. Like, yeah, like they'll. They'll have to dig up one, and then they'll put it to the side and then take care of it later. And I've always wondered what they did with it, and so I wondered so badly that I enrolled in a summer school class called CSI, and so I've learned what they do with some of the dead bodies. That's really cool. I have a question for you. Whenever you're around the natives, like the native spirits, mm -hmm. when you're around them, um, do you know any of their names? Do they talk about who they are? Do they tell you who well, you are? Well, not really, but, um... Can you just... Is there... I feel that there's one um, in particular that's very prominent with you that... I'm going to describe him. He has three feathers. 
He has a headband, it's a red headband, holds his three feathers. He's very tall, he's taller than me. Mm -hmm. He's got a very, he's really tall, he's very big, he's like, he walks around Even like taller this. than Uncle Jeff and he... Oh yeah, camera, sorry. Than Uncle Jeff and Uncle Jeff would bonk his head on the he door. Walks, he, he walks around like this, he always has his nose it up. And he has bands only on this arm. He has bands on this arm. He walks around in just a cloth. He has a lot of beads. I don't know his name. He has very, very short hair. And he has war paint on the same side of his face that he carries his beads. Mm -hmm. I don't know who he is, but I, I just feel his presence on you. He protects you and he looks after you. And as long as he's there, pretty much nothing can touch you. And I want to know more about him. Well, like, sometimes I... Uh, sorry, I'm getting off. Because I know we thought that somebody would think of him like that. Okay, so my thing... You're so happy that somebody understands. So, one time we were, like, driving and... Oh, and um, my sis, my sis, my fifty-year-old sister's car, and so we passed this one mountain, and she said that this Native American chief was born there, and so well was uh, buried there, and so I've always imagined him as one of his um soldiers. He's one of the Braves, and he has a very special connection with you he he's telling me right now he could have been chief but he was not the right man to be chief one of his friends one of his fellow braves one of his brothers was was meant to be chief and and he knew that his role as a strong brave was to stand behind the chief and rally all of the fellow braves and all of the fellow warriors behind the chief behind his friend that he stood behind and he's very protective he's very loyal and right now he's standing behind you like this get out of the way <laughs> <laughs> right now he's standing there he's, he's looking at me and he's going like this and, um, whenever we were passing that mountain that was when i first started to feel his presence like, I didn't like then when she told me the story of him. He, it felt like he was sitting in the car. He was. All the owls that you see, those are your guardians. Those are him and his men watching out for you, making okay. sure that... Because with your, with your beautiful gift... <laughs> With, with your gift comes great danger, and the reason you don't experience it, experience any of it, is because he stands behind you, and nothing can move through him. He will not let it. We've explored all the history in a town called Nevada, Missouri. We've heard all the ghost stories and the local legends from the people who live there. Next time, maybe we'll end up in your town. <laughs>